Remember in a previous lesson, we looked at the prisoner's dilemma in a normal form representation. Recall in the game that the scenario is that two people who committed a crime got arrested and need to decide whether or not to confess C or don't confess D. Now, we want to see which one of these joint profiles make up a Nash equilibrium. So first we'll list out what are all the possible joint profiles. Well, they can either both confess CC, player one can confess, player two cannot confess or don't confess, player one doesn't confess and player two confesses, or both players don't confess. Now remember, the definition of a Nash equilibrium is that no player has an incentive to unilaterally deviate. So, to see which one of these profiles is a Nash equilibrium, we will go through each one one by one. So let's look at don't confess, don't confess. And look at, let's look at it first from the point of view of player two. So player two chooses here, D or C, don't confess or confess, and we're here. Now, can player two do better by changing his strategy from don't confess to confess? Well, yes, he does, because player two prefers four over three. So we know that this cannot be a Nash equilibrium. We could have started the analysis with player one and see that player one also has an incentive to switch from don't confess to confess. For it not to be a Nash equilibrium, only one player needs to have an incentive to deviate, but in this case, both players do. Okay, so we know that don't confess, don't confess is not a Nash equilibrium. How about if player two confesses and player one doesn't? Well, can player two benefit by switching his strategy from confess to don't confess? Well, if player two changes his strategy from confess to don't confess, while well, player one plays don't confess, his reward or his utility goes from four to three. So player two, in this case, does not have an incentive to deviate. How about player one? Well, if player two is confessing and player one has his mouth shut, or here, does player one have an incentive to switch his strategy from don't confess to confess. Ah, he does, because he prefers two over one. We can do the same thing when player two plays don't confess and player one plays confess. We can say, does player two have an incentive to deviate? Well, yes, because if player two switches his strategy from don't confess to confess, he gets a reward of two, which is better than one forgot my little X up here, not a Nash equilibrium, not a Nash equilibrium. So even though this is the only one left, I haven't told you that there is always a Nash equilibrium, so we still have to check to see if confess, confess is a Nash equilibrium. Okay, let's look at first from the point of view of player two. If they're both confessing, does player two have an incentive to switch his strategy to don't confess? Well, if he switches his strategy, he goes from two to one, Ah, but he doesn't want that. So player two has no incentive to change his strategy, no incentive to unilaterally deviate. How about player one? Given that player two is playing confess, does player one have an incentive to switch his strategy from confess to don't confess? And we see that if, if player one switches his strategy, instead of getting a reward of two, he'll get a reward of one. So player one, that's represented by this switch right here. So player one has no incentive to deviate. So at confess, confess, no player has an incentive to unilaterally deviate, and thus CC, confess, confess, is the Nash equilibrium of this game. Of course, the troubling part about this is that in equilibrium, both players earn a reward of two, but if they could somehow both keep their mouth shut, they would get a reward of three, but in this case, each player has an incentive to change their strategy to confess. This is the Nash equilibrium of the prisoner's dilemma.